The male and uh, female pattern hair loss are uh, quite common and uh, at 50 years about 50% of males will have male pattern hair loss and about 30 will have some female hair loss. Now, the hallmark of male and female pattern hair loss is actually a miniaturization of the terminal pigmented antigen hair, hairs which actually become fine hypopigmented vellus hairs. You can see it here. And um, actually, there are two processes, which is one is shortening of the antigen phase and the other one is elongation of the telogen. Also, there is um, some exogen shedding that occurs uh, sometime before a, rene a renewal of the antigen onset. And um, also with aging, we also see some uh, canogen, and that is hair follicles that remain uh, in the telogen without actually hair fibers, so these are empty hair follicles, and so the density, the hair volume looks uh, lower. Now, for male pattern, we actually know that um, it will be the 5-alpha reductase, which actually um, gets um, from uh, testosterone to be dehydrotestosterone, and actually there are uh, multiple androgen metabolizing enzymes that reside in the hair follicle and lead to this end organ <laughs> sensitivity. For female pattern hair loss, it's, we, we don't know ex exactly how it actually uh, works. We don't know the exact pathogenesis. But anyway, we do know that new hair growth does require activation of stem cells and these stem cells are present in two main areas and that is in the bulge and in the dermal papilla. So I'll show you another picture in the bulge and in the dermal papilla. And so this is the growth cycle. I guess you're all familiar with um, the growth cycle of the hair. So it goes um, anagen, catagen, telogen, and then it enters again into anagen. Now, so anagen, uh, androgens from the dermal papilla actually uh, secrete, there is, um, they lead to secretion of factors which will terminate uh, anagen and will lead to entry into catagen. And um, the growth factors that we know that play a role there and actually um, are important to continue antigen is uh, insulin-like growth factor one, uh, fibroblast growth, fa basic fibroblast growth factors, and also all other fibroblast growth factors are playing a role, and vascular endothelial uh, growth factors, which when they decrease, actually there is an entry of the hair uh, into catagen. And on the other hand, uh, we can also get the hair to enter to um, actually, if they, if they increase, TGF beta, interleukin 1, TNF alpha, if they increase, there is an entry into catagen. So the, it's actually kind of an equilibrium of these uh, growth factors. Now these are the scales and you know, and, and also you know, I guess you're all aware about the different treatments that we have available. And so there is topical minoxidil or finasteride, of course, hair transplantation. And I think what is actually quite new is hair follicle stimulation. Uh, energy-based devices, and we'll have some uh, talk about uh, PRP also, platelet-rich plasma, but uh, energy-based devices is an upcoming uh, field. So, um, well, you, ha you, you must know all the problems of finasteride, and um, you know, you need it long term, it takes time, there are some side effects, of course, it's an, it's an oral medication, not everybody wants to take an oral medication, and it has, um, as we said, some side effects, minoxidil, the same, actually, not always effective, if it would be effective, then we won't see so much um, uh, female and male pattern hair loss uh, all around, and uh, but, but there is some efficacy, of course, for minoxidil, and it is now the mainstay, actually, it is approved, and um, it, is, it is a drug that is considered quite, um, relatively effective to, to everything that we do not have, okay? Now, a low laser light therapy is actually interesting because the idea came about 
when people saw that there is paradoxical hair growth after laser hair removal. So they thought, you know, if there is paradoxical hair growth after hair removal, maybe we can induce the same hair growth by using lower energies of lasers, of light, to actually have hair growth. And there are a few devices uh, on the market, some, um, well, they, they, uh, some of them are FDA approved. Uh, these are some, but there are many, many devices. Most of them use um, red, um, I mean, the wavelengths will be about 650 to 900 uh, nanometers, but some, at least part of the spectrum will be uh, red, and the energies that they use are quite uh, low. And um, what they do is that there is uh, some increase in terminal hair density after 26 weeks. So you, you will notice that all treatments take time with hair. And uh, in the treatment group, uh, mostly there is a greater increase in the mean terminal hair density than in the sham group. So these are there are actually multiple uh, studies on, on the different uh, devices. Now, um, I would like to present to you something completely new. It's actually microfractional radio frequency that stimulates hair growth. And uh, the idea for this uh, technology actually came when um, it, it, when, well, uh, it was seen, it was noticed that in psoriatic skin, on the scalp, where we have psoriatic lesions, the hair growth is increased. So at areas where patients of psoriasis have lesions, at that area, the hair grows faster. So there is actually there, at that area, increased stem cell recruitment and switch on of the entry into antigen. And this was compared to wound healing induced hair growth, which means actually upregulation of the wind beta-catenin pathway. And another article, which uh, was also very interesting and also was a leader to, to develop the idea, was the formation of new hair in a healed wound. And this was an article, a very well-known article by Chuang from 2007, uh, which showed that after the epidermis is disrupted in the skin of adult mice, there is actually repetalization, but also new hair follicle formation in the same area. And this is the, the study where they made this, uh, you know, these surgical wounds that actually led to new hair growth. And um, another study uh, from, this was a study from, uh, wait a minute, when was it published? 2000, 2011. And um, this, in this study, it was 1550 nanometer fraction. So it's a non-ablative um, laser. Okay, 1550 is a non-ablative wavelength that actually induced female pad in uh, hair growth in females. And in this study, what they saw is they saw increased hair density. So the hair count per centimeter quadrant went up from 100 to 157. And also what they saw was increase in hair thickness. So two parameters which actually led to better hair volume. And also here, it took five months, okay? Well, I think five months is about something we have, we'll have to accept for hair growth in, um, I th also, for, um, also for the topic of minoxidil, finasteride, all of them take time. Now, so, so also they did a study on, my, on mice in the same study, and it was very interesting because also in mice, they saw um, higher density, and also, they showed that there were, um, I think in this study, markers for the, of the wind beta catenin pathway. And this was another study very similar to this one, also 1550 wavelengths, a fractional, a non-ablative laser. In uh, here, men with male pattern hair loss uh, were um, subjects. And here, also, they, really, they showed that the wind beta catenin pathway, which is the pathway that shows there is actually a stem cell activation and entry into the anagen, that that was the mechanism, so that the wound one minute. Okay. So I have to skip this because I want to show you the device. So the microfractional RF is actually a fractional radio frequency device which doesn't ablate, okay, doesn't ablate the skin. Uh, we had 11 patients, uh, 10 um, finished the study, study and um, we had uh, hair counts and we measured the hair shaft thickness. And uh, the mean thickness before was 48.4, uh, and after we had 
57.1 hair thickness and on trichoscopy the hair counts were, were before um, the treatment 136 hairs per centimeter quadrant and we had after 10 treatments, after about uh, it's four and a half months, 179 hairs, which means 31.6% improvement in the hair counts, and we had 18% improvement in hair shaft thickness after these treatments. And I'll show you some uh, clinicals uh, due to the time, so I would like I would like to elaborate. So this is before and after 12 treatments, and this was a patient after 10, and this one is after 7, and um, also... 11 treatments. So you see that there is also improvement in the quality of the hair, not only, so it's really the hair looks better. It's another one, 10 treatments. This one is 10. Um, and uh, yeah, this one is nice. And this one is also one of our patients. So most of the patients are patients who tried everything. So anyway, hair growth stimulation by energy-based devices opens new horizons in the treatment of pattern hair loss. Hairlux, that's the name of the device from Inogen Technologies, which is the, the company which uses microfractional radio frequency, is both effective and safe. And time and multiple treatments are needed to achieve remarkable results. So really do need the 10 treatments and the five, um, nearly five months or four and a half months to have the result. Mm -hmm.